I've spent nearly 100 hours over the past month building the best team imaginable inside of Pal World. This build ended up being so powerful that even the strongest bosses in the entire game didn't stand a chance. Before I can show off how strong this build can really be, I first need to take you to the beginning. This is the strongest build in Pal World. I hope you enjoy. This journey started a few weeks ago after I had started making the schematics video on my channel. It sparked a question to me that I just couldn't stop thinking about. How strong can a player really be? How much damage is truly possible? So, I started doing research. I scanned over the entire PAL deck, went through all my chests of random loot from 100 plus hours, and searched every potential way to make an insanely overpowered team utilizing player attack. I had a plan. One PAL caught my eye when scrolling through the deck. Gobfin. With his ability, I'd be able to boost my player damage without even needing to throw him out. If I do this build right, these bosses are about to be as pissed as Gobfin looks. However, there is one caveat that I didn't consider when making this plan. I'd need to breed for well over 500 pals in total. So, the grind commenced. After I caught 50 Gobfins, I finally found separate ones with the two traits I was looking for, Vanguard and Stronghold Strategist. Vanguard buffs player attack by 10%, and Stronghold Strategist buffs player defense by 10%. Both of these traits are applied to the player without the pal even being out. By using these traits, I'll be optimizing how strong my character can be. The final addition to my team was none other than Frostallion, and here's why. There were essentially two routes I was considering taking. I considered doing a lifesteal build with Felbat or Lavander, and I considered doing a build with one of the type boosting mounts like Frostallion, Chillet, Azurub, or Ragnarok. I went with the type booster pals because I believe having a tanky pal to ride on is simply better than gaining HP after dealing damage. If you do enough damage in the late game, healing won't be an issue because the bosses won't last long enough to deal any significant damage to you anyway. The super effective bonuses were just too strong to pass on. Type boosting mounts, on the other hand, turn your attacks into a certain typing, which makes your attacks super effective against certain pals. In Frostallion's case, it turns your attacks into ice moves. This is the second strongest type in the game, as a lot of endgame fights are dragon types, which are weak to ice, and Frostallion is by far the strongest and fastest out of the options I had. I regret this choice still, as getting a Frostallion with everything I was looking for and condensing it ended up taking about eight hours. I was actually so desperate to get a vanguard roll on one that I tripled the spawn rates of pals to catch three at a time. That's right, I fought three frost stallions at a time just to get one trait. Eventually, I had to just give up looking for vanguard and breed for a mutation to get the trait I needed. Once the breeding began, I started farming dungeons for an item that I'll explain more about later in this video. After about four hours, I got this. Finally, I had vanguard. This was the only mandatory trait I needed for this build to reach its full potential, but I was only about 5 days into the process of making this team at this point, so I hadn't lost the will to live quite yet. Being the naive idiot I am, I decided it wouldn't be so bad to combine Stronghold Strategist, Legend, and Motivational Leader onto the Frostallion with Vanguard. This little decision of mine to really push for the best Frostallion I could conceptualize ended up taking almost 5 hours of breeding and adjusting parents repetitively to finally get the right roll. Once I was done with getting the right Frostallion, I immediately condensed it to max because I had bred enough to build a small army. I'll talk about condensing pals later in this video though. I have to say, getting this Frostallion was one of the most satisfying moments in this entire journey. As I touched upon earlier, the next component to this build had to do with farming dungeons. This part of the challenge was easily my least favorite experience inside of Pal World in my 200 hours of playing. The reason I was farming dungeons was for two copies of the attack pendant plus two. These necklaces are ridiculously broken, and I was extremely excited to add them to my final build. Sadly, over the course of this challenge, I spent well over 10 hours running through dungeons to no avail. I got countless life, defense, and even diligence pendants of the plus two variety, but I could never find a single attack pendant plus two. If I ever see another pendant of diligence, I might jump out of a second story window. I did manage to find an attack pendant plus one, which is still a great item, but I couldn't spend more time on this portion of the project. With defeat on my mind, it was time to get back on track. Although I already got the four Gobvins with the right traits earlier in this video, I still haven't caught all the ones I need to condense them down to four stars. To condense one pal down to a four star, you need to sacrifice 116 of that pal in total. Condensing is absolutely broken inside a pal world for a multitude of different reasons. Here's how it benefits this current build of mine. Condensing these Gobvins into four stars actually buffs their passive abilities substantially meaning they give my character significantly more damage than if they were simply 0 stars. I show a comparison of 0 and 4 star goblins a little later in this video, so stay tuned. While I didn't need to go out of my way to catch Frostallions earlier to condense them because I had bred so many, 
This simply wasn't an option for me with the goblins for two reasons. The first reason is that catching goblins is significantly faster than breeding for an egg every five minutes. And the second reason is because I don't want to farm another 464 cakes. I have a life after all. I went through well over 500 hyperspheres in this process and spent about two hours in between runs farming up more spheres. I have a life, I swear. Finally finishing condensing all four goblins was also incredibly satisfying. My next step was to reset my player stats with the memory wiping potion. At least this part of the project should be simple. At the expense of carrying anything ever again and being able to run for more than 4 seconds at a time, I can now deal more damage. With my base attack doubled, all my other pals and items that buff attack by a percentage are now significantly better as well. The last step of this process is actually simple. All I had to do was make the best food in the game for buffing attack, the Mazarina Cheeseburger. I decided to have mercy on my cow, so I went and murdered all of his long lost relatives instead. This 20% attack buff was the last buff in the game I could find for attack. I initially wanted to stack an omelette with the cheeseburger, but to my dismay, it appears consumables cannot be stacked. Before I go murder some bosses, let me show you how substantial the difference is before all my buffs and after. Also, just for reference, this is the difference between a fully condensed 4-star goblin and a 0-star goblin. Let's see if this build works as well as I hoped it would against the strongest bosses in the game. Well, that's it. All that time and effort just to fight the strongest legendary in the game in a few seconds. Was it worth it? No. Would I do it again? In a heartbeat. Also, it turns out the shotgun is really better than the AR for this kind of build, which I suppose makes sense. The stun locking on the boss surprised me too with the shotgun. He literally had zero chance to attack me the entire time. Let's take on Victor and Shadowbeak next, since I never even bother getting around to that and I don't have a type advantage against him. With Victor's defeat, my journey was complete. I had assembled the strongest team I've ever seen in Pal World. While this was a really enjoyable experience, it did take me ages to complete. So if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a like and sub. If you have any suggestions for future videos, shoot me a message on my Discord, which is linked below, or leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Jace, and I'll see you guys next time.